Entertainment is overtaking multiplayer gaming on, of all things, the Xbox. And we got Jamin Warren joining us now from Brooklyn. And uh, he's going to tell us all about this. Jamin? Hello. How hey, are you doing? Thank you very much. You're on the phone, we, we, we know. Um, d d tell us what, what happened here. Why did it change suddenly? This was always a gaming device. And sure. then it wasn't. Uh, last summer, uh, Xbox uh, announced that they were going to be making some changes to the dashboard, which is the first thing that you see when you boot up your Xbox. And um, some of the new changes they would be adding uh, more entertainment uh, applications, such as access to uh, ESPN, uh, via ESPN3. But really, what you saw was a larger strategic shift on Microsoft's part to include more entertainment alongside of the traditional kind of gaming offerings. Um, oh, this week, they announced that they were going to be adding some new applications, including including HBO Go and MLB TV. But alongside of that came um, some interesting statistics from Microsoft about usage. Um, one was that you know, the average person paying for Xbox Live service was using uh, using it more than 80 hours a month. But of those 80 hours, what they were finding was that um, entertainment usage had more than doubled uh, in terms of take, you know, taking over what was once mostly multiplayer games. And so, uh, you know, I, I, they didn't break down exactly how that was being divvied up. Um, and, you know, certainly Netflix is something that's available via streaming on your Xbox, and I suspect that that had a large role to play. But uh, you know, the, the big story here is that you know that Microsoft is looking at the success of you know Apple with their other entertainment devices, entertainment and phone devices, and what they're seeing is that there's a broader future for them in terms of including other existing entertainment options, whether it's HBO or Netflix or ESPN, than there is just relying entirely on games. So it's uh, you know it's certainly it's certainly from a strategic standpoint, it looks like it's it's, it's bearing out well for the company. Do you mean uh, my under hi? It's Lauren. Uh, my understanding is that this uh, does not necessarily come at the expense of online gaming through the Xbox. It, it appeared as though you're year-over-year year metrics were up overall and that included online gaming in addition to streaming is that correct yeah absolutely so uh, obviously people are still really rabid about playing games but what you're seeing is like a broadening of basically a widening of that pie uh, what's only included multiplayer options when uh, the Xbox Live service launched uh, more than five years ago uh, what you're seeing now is the, the addition of additional entertainment options and so there's just more things for the you know hardcore uh, hardcore game player to actually do online Mm -hmm. Where does the uh, where does the Connect fit in? I mean, I, I remember when the Connect first came out, and some people saw it as rejuvenating at that point. What was considered, you know, the aging Xbox that we haven't seen an Xbox refresh in a, in a while. Um, so, where does the Connect fit in, considering that's you know primarily a gaming device? Um, well, the, you know, part of the entertainment options has been integrating the Connect into the different features. So when you pull up ESPN, for example, you can give the you can give your screen via the Connect device different demands in terms of pulling up different programming options. Um, right now, though, I feel like the Connect is still uh, it's a possibility space in terms of uh, allowing people to do interesting things with the device. You know, for the most part, game developers have been doing a lot with the Connect, and you haven't really seen um, really interesting, uh, unique integrations of Connect into the uh, entertainment applications, but you know, I think that Microsoft is looking. They're looking forward, and given given uh, how many units that they sold of the Connect over the last uh, over the last year, I think there's a lot of possibilities. The, uh, the other thing that's worth noting is that uh, Microsoft is pushing the Connect into business applications as well. They announced uh, an enterprise version, uh, software per version of the Connect that would allow developers at say healthcare institutions or hospitals to build applications with the Connect. So you know, I think Microsoft is looking at games as the Xbox as a way to get a foothold in, 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 a, in entertainment, a consumer entertainment space, but they're looking outside of those doors ultimately because there's a lot of money out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but back to the Xbox, what uh, chance do you see for copycats? Um, people saying, oh, well, they've done well at Microsoft with this Xbox, this multi-use um, device that's not just gaming and it's not just entertainment, it does sort of, you know, everything but fly. Someone else, you know, coming up with that and saying, okay, well, we're going to do the same. That, that's an excellent point. Um, you know, one of the reasons why the Xbox gained a foothold was because it was exclusively exclusively a gaming device, and there were um, Xbox exclusives such as the really popular Gears of War franchise that you could only use the Xbox to play. And that's not necessarily the case with some of the entertainment applications. HBO Go is available elsewhere on your laptop. Netflix is available on uh, competing video game consoles mm -hmm. like the Microsoft Wii and PlayStation 3. So you know, there's certainly a risk there that people may confuse exactly 
exactly what it is the Xbox is for as they're trying to position it, um, you know, as the centerpiece of the living room. And obviously, there's always the specter of Apple if they move into the uh, move into the television space. What that might mean for uh, Microsoft as they're repositioning the Xbox. Right. Keep yeah. in mind as well, Simon. You look at something like the Roku box, which now has much less, ex you know, expensive it, it, models. It, you look at something like the Apple uh, TV box right now, ninety-nine dollars, right? And so, uh, I mean, brings up a good point, which is that if people start to get confused, well, is this a, you know, a gaming console that's hundreds of dollars, or am I looking to just get some entertainment apps like Netflix and MLB.TV? There are other options out there for that. Exactly. So, so, yeah. Remember that it costs you know about sixty dollars a year to use Xbox Live, and so if consumers feel like they're paying extra for services that are free to run, you already pay for Netflix, and then you're paying an additional seven dollars, six seven dollars a month to have access for it on your Xbox 360. That might not bode well uh, in terms of what consumers think about the device. Mm -hmm. I just have to say really quickly. I remember when Jameen was writing at the Wall Street Journal, and his desk here in the building was covered. Covered with ga video games and gaming consoles and all sorts of gadgets. And Jameen, we can't see you right now, but I'm just curious whether your desk at home looks something like your desk here at the Journal. It's a little, it's a little bit cleaner. Okay. Uh, not, not a ton, but you I have can't to make stay any true to your gaming oh, roots. Yeah, You've got to keep it a mess. It's just the way it goes. <clears throat> Yeah, well, yeah. we won't tell you to tidy up your desk. We won't be your mother. Thank you very much, Jermaine Warren, coming to us from Brooklyn there. Thank you very much for that.